Right, guys. Well, firstly, I've only seen two episodes so far, but I'm absolutely loving it so far. It's like the perfect. Shame on you. It's just so calming and lovely. I just find it really, oh. really, really enjoyed it. Oh, um, really? Good. Brilliant. I'm going to start uh, with you, uh, Sam, just how this kind of idea came to fruition. I obviously know um, you guys have known each other for some time, but when did you first start having kind of conversations about this, uh, this prospect and this project? Yeah, I was, I was lying in bed one night, dreaming up ways of, of how I could um, <laughs> harass Graham McTavish. And it just came to me in a dream, but um, no, but uh, seriously, like, I think, you know, we, we obviously both worked on Outlander and um, had this prior relationship, but uh you know, I was looking to create my own uh, IP and TV show, et cetera, and um, was thinking about the Scotland and how much it's a big factor of, of uh, Outlander and been very popular. Uh, I met up with Graham and we were in Los Angeles. We were having, uh, he was having a, a cafe latte and I was having a beer and uh, found out that he'd also had an idea, you know, a, a long time ago about um, a similar concept. And it just kind of really snowballed, you know, we just thought, well, let's, how do we create IP? What's the easiest way? And we thought we might make a, a podcast, um, of which Graham had no idea what I was talking about and looked very blank. Um, and then, uh, yeah, I just, I was back in Scotland shooting Outlander and I pulled together a crew and some locations. And before we knew it, I got him to, to get on an airplane and come to Scotland. So um, I think he's probably still in shock right now about what happened. <laughs> yeah. I'm in therapy. Yes, in therapy <laughs> about it. Right, Graham, do you think that Scotland is an underrated country? Like, especially aesthetically speaking. I mean, it's one of the most beautiful places I've ever visited, especially the Highlands. Yeah, it's a that's a good question. I don't I don't know if it's. I think it's it's undergone somewhat of a uh, a, a change over the years. Um, I know when I was growing up that Scotland was somewhat the butt of uh, people's jokes and wasn't taken particularly seriously. I know my father. Uh, definitely suffered from that quite a lot when he was growing up. Uh, but nowadays, I think Scotland re has really asserted its uh, identity uh, a, a lot more in the last, well, maybe 20, 20 or so years. And I think, you know, more recently, Outlander uh, has had a, a huge effect on that, actually, that it's, it's broadcast to the world um, a story of Scotland that has generated interest in, in people coming there. You know, the, the tourist figures speak to speak for themselves. I think it's what, what is it, Sam? It's like 70, 70 percent. Um, I mean, yeah. That it's increased. Places, but, yeah, it's, it's huge. I mean, I think Doom Castle, something like 200 percent. But but yeah, I think overall yeah. it's been it's yeah. been a huge, um, a huge increase. Yeah. yeah Sam, and I think it's it's been. It's been many things, but that's that's one of them. Yeah, Sam, was it quite nice kind of like learning more about your own nations? I guess it's so often when we kind of go traveling, want to see parts of the world, sometimes we kind of forget to actually learn more and kind of visit and, and travel around our actual home. Yeah, I mean, you know, I think one of the joys of the show and, and also the timing of it, you know, we were one of the first shows to shoot after the first lockdown. And of course, with travel restrictions, people aren't able to go abroad um as, as as easily but but actually yeah i mean it's exactly what we were trying to do you know i tried to bring as many locations and people that i'd met on my travels through working on outlander and other projects to together and just share and impart some of that interest and intrigue into to the country that we live in and hopefully it will inspire other people to to just you know get get in a camper van take some unwitting um companion and, and just just go and you, and you just don't know who you'll meet and, and where you'll go but there's so much history and so much to explore in scotland and really we, we barely touch the surface yeah yeah graham i mean being yeah. patriotic has been kind of hijacked somewhat by the kind of right and nationalists particularly in england i mean you can't mm -hmm. the st george's flag is not something you want hanging out your window these days but this watching this show it kind of mm -hmm. serves as a nice reminder that it's okay to kind of love your country and celebrate its culture and, and traditions Absolutely. Yeah. I, I think the celebration of one's own culture doesn't mean the denial of other people's. And uh, it's, um, you know, when I when I think about Scotland, uh, you know, there are there are there's so much that I'm proud of and, and want to celebrate. And this show is part of that celebration. You know, we we saw it as a somewhat of a love letter to Scotland uh, to try and to try and show people um, the many, many facets of the country. Uh, and also to to encourage them uh, in an audience to feel like they were on a journey 
with us to discover this country. And yeah, and national, you know, in terms of nationalism, um, I, I'm I'm proud of 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 my Scottishness, but I'm not uh, I'm not somebody who uh, is condemning of other people's uh, cultures and nationalism. I, I'm 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 all for it. You know, uh, I think it's uh, it's a wonderful thing to be proud, not just of your country, but your neighborhood, your county, your town, uh, your family. And, you know, and, and to some degree, that's what that's what Scotland tells us is that the clan mm -hmm. system that created the Highlands was built around that kind of pride. You know, the pride of an individual clan over another clan. It wasn't about what for, for, for a MacLeod. It wasn't about being Scottish. It was about being a MacLeod, and yep. and that's that's interesting, you know. That's what binds people together. So, yeah. So I'm don't forward. don't don't leave your village because the other clan's gonna get you. So. Yeah, it's you know, don't, don't don't go to the other village saying how much better you are than they are. That's for sure. Yeah. So, so talking traditions, Sam, is it true to? Do, do you wear pants under the kilt? Because my father-in-law's Scottish, and on our wedding day, my wedding day with my wife, he wore a kilt, and he never told me if he was wearing pants. And I didn't, I didn't, I didn't ask for proof, obviously. But I just, but it's. I think that yeah. was wise not to ask. <laughs> no, it's normally women's <laughs> underwear is what we wear. But um, you know, it's just, it, it's really up to it's up to the individual, I think. You know, but uh, I mean, it, I just you know the show is called Men in Kilts, and we do wear a lot of kilts, and to be honest. We loved it, didn't we? And you know, it's it's a really it's it is again a part yeah. of our heritage and our culture. But then we look at it in the show. You know, what what does it mean to wear a tartan or or, or a kilt? And what is that about? And um, again, it's it's just a, a really strong part of our our identity. And I think there's so much history to it. Um, and in fact, you know, part of the tartan history is is pretty much a fabrication. It's made up by the Victorians. Um, so uh, it's, it's just a really sort of fascinating um, part of Scottish culture, I guess. The, the garment itself is just so liberating. It really yeah. is. It's just great. You never yeah, had amazing. a bad night in a car. That's a yeah. very good quote. Um, so I'm not going to ask you if you like haggis, because I think that's a, I, I don't understand why that's a contentious subject. Haggis is absolutely lovely. But I was going to ask about bagpipes. Really, yeah. do you like the sound of bagpipes? Or, or all of you pretending? I love I love <laughs> the sound too. of bagpipes. Yeah, I know I, it is a bit like you know you either like marmite or you don't. It's uh, if you like bagpipes, you love them, and they they move you deeply. You know, I find it hard to to not cry pretty much every time I hear them, uh, and I'm not really sure why exactly, but I, I do love that. Bad do love experience, the maybe. I mean, one of my <laughs> well, my father played the bagpipe, so maybe that's something to do with it. Um, but you know, one of the most memorable experiences on shooting men in kilts was when Ian McGilvery is walking along through the battlefield of Culloden playing the bagpipes and uh, immensely moving but it's you know it's not for everyone it is I agree I mean I think uh, I, you know at times I was like I used to be kind of embarrassed by them and and I have to admit the more I've traveled around the world I honestly I can hear a bagpipe but I don't know a mile away i can i can just hear it on the wind and you, you instantly can yeah. know they're there and i've i've seen them you know i've seen them in los angeles i've seen them um I've seen them in london i've seen them wherever you go um and it is it's a, it's a it's a weapon of war it's got so much history with it and i think there's some the sound of it as well really it does it laments right and i think that that's really interesting and it um it conjures up a lot of the 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 ghosts in the history of scotland I was going to ask you, Sam, about you, because um, you got your own whiskey and an award-winning whiskey. How, how did that all come about and that kind of um, passion? Is that, is that true, Sam? I, I I didn't know that. You've got your own whiskey? You mean this really? one? This one? Oh, yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah, no, we just, um, today, we just found out we won another gold medal. So we've already won several. Right. Uh, but we just won another double gold, the San Francisco Spirit Awards. I'm very, very proud, as you can probably tell, because, nice. yeah, it came about I'm very in, in much just. Thank you. You're still not getting some, but um, but yes, it, it's uh, it's something I just wanted to do. You know, I'm I, I love a whiskey as much as I love my country, and um, I've been approached by a lot of different distilleries and companies to sort of put my name to one, but I wanted to make it myself, so it was self-financed and um, created, and and every part of it, you know, it sort of went into, especially the tasting process, and I think. I'm really proud that it's done so well. So we're doing another release. Uh, it's available in the UK at the moment. There's another release in America and 
and, and Canada as well um, in August. So excited for that. Have you tried it, That's Graham? That's I, I had a sip once. Um, I did, and it was very nice. It was very, it was very nice. No, I'm, I'm joking. Okay. I, I actually do now have a bottle. I do now have a bottle. It finally arrived in New Zealand. Uh, I think Sam just threw it in the sea and it floated down to. I actually was going to ask for that back because we're kind of running a bit <laughs> low. And, um, but ah, the whiskey, ah. I mean, we, we actually use it a lot in the show. It, it's sort of our featured, featured bottle. So you'll see it. Yes. It's very delicious. It is. It's genuinely lovely. It is. Yeah. Graham, in, in, in the show, I just That's wondered. Been, yeah. Obviously, everything in what you're doing is all being documented on camera. How, how easy is it or how difficult is it to kind of remain completely natural and be completely yourself? Because I interviewed um, Steve Kruger once about the trip and he said they couldn't help but veer into kind of character versions of themselves because they were kind of playing themselves. Was, it, is that, was there a similar case when, when, you're, when you're making a show like this where as much of it is authentic and genuinely you? Is there always a kind of part of it that's your kind of a stage persona, if that, if that makes sense? Mm. And yes, very good question. Uh, I think I, I would say that because of the nature of the show, which was very spontaneous. So when when we met the guests, we literally had not met them before. We had no script. Uh, so what you see um, is, is, is a genuine moment. And similarly in the camper van, none of that was scripted. It's just me and Sam start driving off and we start talking. We have subjects that we need to address, but that's really it. That's the only brief. So it is us. It is us. I, I, mean, I mean, I would, I would say a slight, in some cases, a slightly heightened version of us. Um, I mean, we definitely play up to the fact that, you know, I'm grumpy and, and, and all the rest of it, but mm. I am grumpy. <laughs> I am. I mean, you know, I'm not going to deny it. Uh, you know, I do like my comforts and Sam does like to talk to me. But these are all true yeah. things. That's true. Yeah. yeah. Also, similarly to uh, the trip, they obviously did other se series following that where they went to other countries and stuff. I just wondered, I mean, there's still so much of Scotland you could explore. But Sam, is, is this an idea, the men in kills, that you could technically kind of transport to another country and kind of visit and, and delve into different cultures? Yeah, I think you hit it on the head there. You know, we we obviously there's a lot of Scotland that we still wanted to hit on, and we had to 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 miss out a lot. But uh, the idea was to create something that we could go elsewhere. You know, the Scottish influence really from this pivotal moment of Culloden onwards. Um, there's there's a lot of influence around all around the world. So yeah, would love to to attach some sort of buoyancy aid to the camper van and launch it um, off the cliffs um, of Sky and just see how far it can float. Mm. And obviously, you know, you guys have met, worked a lot on Outlander. That's, I mean, Graham, that's obviously been such a huge part of your lives now. You must have such fond memories of making that series across the years. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, it's a funny thing, you know. I mean, this is this is the strange thing about, well, life generally, but our business, um, for, for me, is when I met Sam uh, in, a, in a little tiny crowded room in Soho where we were doing this sort of read for... For Outland, you were wearing uh, was, a you were wearing a cape, weren't you? I, I I was not wearing a cape. Oh my god! Anyway, a, we did this hat. Week together, and a top hat, and I was carrying carrying a walking stick. A, no, it was king, yeah. And 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 I I remember thinking at the time uh, that I you know I got on with Sam and I liked him and thought he was great and all that stuff. But I never in my wildest imagination thought that I would be traveling around Scotland in a camper van with him years later. So that is one of the great joys of doing these kind of jobs is that they, they, they have a life outside of the actual filming. And that life is, you know, the friendship that Sam and I built together. And, and, and this is a sort of result of that. And that's, um, I think that's kind of wonderful. Yeah. And uh, finally, uh, Sam, if you thought you'd got through an entire interview without me mentioning the James Bond rumours, I'm afraid you're very much mistaken. I won't ask if you're going <laughs> to be the next 007, because I know you wouldn't tell me, but it must be nice to be in the mix, at least. Yeah, I mean, sure. And I'm sure Graham's in the mix as well. I think uh, it's, it's, I mean, sure it I is am. all just, just, yeah, I thought, sure, funny, funny. Um, it's all it's all rumors, but uh, I mean, of course, it's fascinating. But I think um, whoever gets that part is going to be it's going to be a roller coaster. But 
yeah, nice. I'm very, very honoured to be thrown in there. Do you reckon um, he'd make a good bond, Graham? I think he'd be an excellent bond. I really yeah, do. Thanks. It'd be a fantastic yeah. bond. Yeah. Yeah, do totally. all my own stunts, right? As long, yeah. as, long as I could be your bond villain, yeah. then, then that would be my revenge. I think you'd be the bond girl. I think that would be better. Yeah. Well, as long Ooh, as you just carry on dating. <laughs> as long as you carry on making men in kilts, even if you did get the, the gig, it'd be good. I'd like deal, to see deal. that. Deal. Anyway, we'll do it in Aston Martin, will we? Yeah. <laughs> thank you so much for your time today guys and best of luck with the release this year uh, I'm not at all. Going to watch watch more episodes because i've got more to catch up on uh, uh cheers man stuff. thanks very much thanks, mate. It. cheers mate bye-bye ladies and gentlemen you're watching hey you guys hey you guys huh hey, you guys. is yeah. that from the goonies it is indeed, yeah. nice hey, hey.